you're not making money for the purpose of just spending more money. That's not the point. We're making money to invest money. Well, I think that a lot of people work hard, but they're in the wrong vehicle. You need three things to be successful, ambition, focus, and patience. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Not Financial Advice with me, Lewis Crompton, and today's guest star is Lloyd. So, Lloyd, welcome to the channel. Lewis, like... good, to have, good to be here. Yeah, re really, Thanks really good to have you. We've been trying to get this arranged for a little bit, and we've been in different time zones. <laughs> I wasn't going to throw you under the bus, but yes. <laughs> Chuck me under there. It was my fault. I completely <laughs> just yeah, missed it, but I'm here. So here you're here, we go. you're here. We've made it happen. So let's go for a brief synopsis. You've you've done a heck of a lot in your short years. So yeah, throw it out there. I think to keep it around, you know, the financial side of things, I was just talking to Lewis before, you know, I came out of university like everyone did back when I went to university and you just thrust into it. So I did a undergraduate degree in biomed science, did my master's in business, and then went and got a law degree and became a lawyer. And uh, I didn't like it. So I went into real estate, got a fully real, full real estate license, went into sales and leasing, went overseas and worked for the largest developer in the world in uh, Abu Dhabi and Dubai, built the Formula One circuit there and did some cool projects. Came back to Australia and got into real estate sales again for seven years or so, which was exciting and great, commission only. And then parlayed into network marketing, built this online network marketing business part-time to over a million dollars with my wife. And that transitioned us out of our jobs and then helped us advance and scale our share portfolio beyond seven figures, which is obviously really exciting. And now I'm, I've, I've written two books, Money Buys Happiness and Money Grows on Trees. Got a podcast, Money Grows on Trees, and uh, got a financial coaching business, which, which is my, my main business. So that's... <laughs> short version of how we got here yeah which is just very rapid here. fire version yeah and i think just to shout out your podcast i i was saying that i really enjoy it because it's short it's not like half an hour an hour long hefty commitment it's just nice and short which means i can binge on it if i want to if i'm on one of my morning walks which everybody knows i like to do if you're following me on yeah, instagram yeah. you know that so I, I want to actually ask you a question about the network marketing side of stuff because i've tried network marketing in the past and i mm. personally hated it <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And it's, 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 it's a business model that I actually do believe in. I know a lot of people don't believe in it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I believe yeah. in it. And I think any organization has a form of pyramid structure, which people then attack it as being, oh, it's a pyramid scheme. No, you're, so I've got two problems with it. I'll say my two problems with it. So my number one problem with it is that it's not your business. It's technically still somebody else's. You are a representative of that organization sure. and they can take it away from you. I know many, many stories yep. of people who have had yep. their yeah, yeah. business taken away from them. If it was your business, yep. that wouldn't be possible. The second thing <laughs> that I struggled yeah. with... <laughs> Just to go for it, go for the jugular. Yeah. I love people. I absolutely yeah. love people. People are my passion. It's my thing. And mm -hmm. I personally, I don't think this is the case for everyone, but I personally found it really tricky because I felt like every relationship and conversation I had became laden and heavy with agenda, even if there wasn't a gender in it, because I would then mm. feel guilty that I wasn't prospecting and doing all this yeah. sort of stuff. So I didn't, I didn't yeah. like that. So, uh, and then you. my question off the back of all of that is after you built all of that, which is an amazing achievement, really, really is. And people don't understand how much hard work goes into actually growing a network marketing business. What do you still do that? Or did you walk away from that? And if you did walk away, why, if it was so successful? Yeah. Didn't walk away. Uh, been in eight and a half years now, same company, first company, same company, eight and a half years and made I think 1.4 million US dollars or something like that. And I still do it, like get paid thousands of dollars a week recurring. Still work at it, just putting a group of people, not hundred through side hustle school, which is what our campaign to train and coach people how to do network marketing. And yeah, I love it. It's a, it's a wonderful business, but so it is successful. It's remained successful. That's why I still do it. Brilliant. Fantastic. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so of course, but I, I totally understand all those questions and it's very fair. Th those comments are very fair. And it's an industry with a checkered past because, you know, like over promised and under delivered for people for so long. And what happened in network marketing, which is fascinating, that drew me into it because I want, you don't come out of university or school or a career going, oh, I want to be a network marketer. It's just that three things happened to transform the industry. And one was e-commerce was created. Like you buy things online, that was normal. That became normal when Jeff Bezos launched Amazon. Mm -hmm. The second thing is Steve Jobs put the internet on our phones. Well, yeah. And so, and so we were able to carry around our offices in our phones. And the third thing was that Mark Zuckerberg took our networks and put them online and made door knocking and approaching people for free easily accessible. So those three technology advancements put network marketing into this world of I can work it from anywhere, I can scale it across the world. They drop ship it everywhere. They do everything for me. It's amazing. Yeah. What makes it not amazing is when a company doesn't have good values. Mm -hmm. And that can be said for any industry, you know, like FTX, for example, yeah. right? 
no good culture, no good, all that. And it failed. So it's the same sort of thing. And I think that when you're trying to find a network marketing company, it has to have the right values, a good quality product, legacy, been around for 10 years or more, got good systems, good compensation plan, fair and equitable, good team, good environment, good people. And if you find that, then it's like, and now I found, we found that first go. It's like, wow, I really just dig everything about this. Now, at the time, we didn't know we were going to scale this thing and do a you know, 10-year business build or longer. We just wanted to make an extra few hundred bucks to put into our index fund. Yeah. That was the whole objective. And there was no risk for me because I was already using the products, which are nutrition-based. I was already spending the money. I didn't need the money because I already had a job in property. So I was like, there was no risk. I was like, yeah, of course I'm going to try and do this. This is great, right? Yeah. Part of me, what, what I liked about it, which you touched on, was I, I like that it's recurring because it, if you get a consumable product that people love and reorder, it build, it's a subscription business. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. yeah. It's, and they're the best types of businesses. So once we got that going, I remember it took us a couple of years to get about 100,000 a year income. It was wonderful. And we were working at it hard part time. We were working our businesses. We didn't transition and jump out of our jobs like crazy people. We just built this on the side and put it all into shares. Yeah, this is something which I, I really value about you and what you talk about, because I feel like we have a, an affinity around this type of stuff. So you do, you're not making money for the purpose of just spending more money. That's not the point. We're making money right. to invest money. And that it sounds like it's a common thread with you through all of these mm -hmm. things. And I, I'm I'm similar. And this is what the way I talk about trading, because obviously I'm a trading educator. And when I teach people to trade the financial markets, again, I'm not saying get out of your job as soon as you possibly can and yeah. trade the financial markets, because that is crazy and you will yes. potentially damage yourself i'm not saying that's not possible yeah. but people sure. don't understand the yeah. leap in mindset yeah. that you have to have <laughs> to be able to do that and why yeah. would you do that when you can then have trading income from less than that's 30 right. minutes a day plus Probably. your job income which is secure well i mean nothing's guaranteed is it but way more secure sure. and you yeah. can funnel both of those things into yeah. investments which are going to grow even more over time yes why wouldn't you do that so i love the fact that you you kind of use all of those and for you that might have been initially the network marketing thing which generated that cash which you could then put more into investments for me that yeah. was trading that i then filtered those profits into property and i filled those yeah. properties into index trackers and things like that great very smart i mean end of the day like it was about using my spare time to make some spare money to put into assets and scale the scale that for faster i mean because at the end of the day like what you said nothing is around forever like i don't know like our, we have a wonderful network marketing business with a wonderful company but uh, we live in an uncertain world period and if i'd be it'd be remiss of me to think that we don't like yeah how people cannot plan for uncertainties beyond me because the only thing that is certain is well that is everything is uncertain yeah so rather than rather than me like let we left our, our work. My wife was in paralegal and I was in property. I left there when we hit 200,000 a year in our network marketing business. Mm -hmm. But I did it because I, I wasn't getting the enjoyment out of the property game I was in. And yeah. I love network marketing. So I wanted to pour my whole soul into it and see how far we could get it going. What I didn't realize was you don't need to do it full time, which is even more wonderful. Yeah. So I was like, what else am I going to do now? So that's what allowed me the freedom and capacity and the network and all these skills I learned in network marketing. Truthfully, all the skills I learned there helped me build this financial coaching business I now have. Without network marketing, I wouldn't have been able to get there. It was too far away. And so it was a wonderful bridge. But now we have, you know, multiple incomes now. And we're very fortunate because you some network marketing companies do collapse. Some are not good. Some don't have good comp plans. The products are no good. And the way that people are trained, coming back to your original concerns, they're trained to go out and pitch products and do all that stuff. And that's what can ruin friendships. It can, because you're a flipping psychopath going around <laughs> saying, hey, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. What I learned, and this is what network marketing taught me, was that it's about engaging in conversations about people and seeing if they have a problem you can solve if they do you ask for a referral you never ask directly yeah and it's that, that way they never get put on the spot and i'll give you an example if i was wanting to ask let's say you were a candidate for yeah. products right so listen i don't know if you sit on my facebook i just used this program lost 12 kilos couldn't believe it like just lost all this weight didn't know didn't do any exercise which is amazing for me here's my photo anyway i know it may not be for you but do you know anyone who's looking to get in shape yeah just throw it up just you know, you know what i mean completely and that's um so i've obviously do property as well and i've done property training i've had training about everything i do in my life because i believe in training and education and that's one of the things they say in property as well so if you're looking to raise finance you don't ask someone directly for finance you say hey i've got right. this thing you know i invest in property these are the numbers yeah. do you know anybody that would be interested and if that yeah. person's interested it's not confrontational yeah and they'll yeah. say oh yeah me pick me yeah, yeah. i'm, I'm yeah. the one that wants what's, to do that and what's also interesting about that's called a referral ask and what's interesting about that process of prospecting is that when they say me, they're an inbound lead. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when they're an inbound lead, they're malleable. You can, okay, well, would it be okay if I ask questions if you're a good fit? Yeah, go for it. And then you can ask questions, unpack the pain, say, well, this could work. Here's the information. I'll follow up tomorrow. Is it for you? Yeah, yes, no. And you're done. And I, with social media, what's even cooler about it now in network marketing is you don't always need to even just do the asking. Because if I post valuable stuff and people come to me, yeah. And I don't think that's even the case just with network marketing. I think that's the case with business yeah. in general. It's any Correct. form of coaching and any form Correct. of opportunity. Um, and because my, my business is an opportunity based business, like I give people opportunity to trade financial markets in a safe yep. way, in a profitable way, in a time yep. manner, which only takes them 30 minutes a day once they know what they're doing. I always caveat that once they know what they're doing because you're not going to tomorrow start making a million dollars off of trading and That's again right. there's all these unrealistic expectations and i think the opportunity industry i'll say to kind of broaden it i think you you made a really good point there's been so much damage done to it because of over promising and under delivering and often that over promising is how little work is required <laughs> yeah of um, course absolutely <sighs> I know. And the thing is, in any industry, you're going to have people that kicked it out of the park. Like, I, I do know people that that make and have made, like one of my friends, he made 200 grand one year in network marketing. The next year, he was making $1 million, like actually. And they do exist, those things. It does. You find scale and it does. But they're very, they're one percenters. And so if you're, if you're marking the one percent club to the 99 percenters, then all you're doing is skewing their expectations. You're Massively. better off to have low expectations and help them like over deliver on the, oh, wow, I actually made some money. That's what happened to me. I went in with zero expectations. Like, oh, whatever, I'll try it. You know, I'll, I'll jump in. And when we made 400 bucks in our first week or something, I was like, holy crap. Like, and, and that moment set me up for the rest of the time. But if you're going in with these massive expectations, you're going to be disappointed and sad exactly. with anything. Ex you with know. anything and i i do think that's yeah. potentially i mean i'm taking this really broad now but potentially a part of the problem with society and why people are so demotivated why they're so depressed and why they're so anxious is because we're constantly bombarded with the one percenters as being the norm and it's yeah. not the norm it and it's okay that it's not the norm and i i feel this sometimes i'm like oh things aren't going as well as i would like them to go but i'm still way further ahead of other people and i don't mean that in a negative way or arrogant or proud way i just mean i'm trying and i'm not at the one percent and i try really hard and there's so many factors that allow the one percent to become the one percent and i think it's really damaging to say it's just work ethic and it's just your mindset I, I think that is so incredibly damaging because some of the hardest working people i know have also been the unluckiest people i know and things yeah. have just happened which have not led them to be able to be as successful as they could be i'm not saying they're not successful because hard work will outwork bad luck and situation and the circumstance it really will yeah well i think that a lot of people work hard but they're in the wrong vehicle and then yeah, that's also you know, true. i was looking i was watching i was, saw alex hormozzi post this on his twitter he said that you need three things to be successful ambition focus and patience and ambition is kind of like the opposite side of patience <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's kind of this urging impatience inside of you to go and achieve. So those are kind of like dichotomy traits. But I would add to them and say you need to be coachable because you need to get help from mentors to accelerate your success a lot faster than just doing all the mistakes yourself. And also you need to, yeah, that would be it. It was the coachability part. So I think I'd put all those four traits into what it takes to succeed at anything. But I think if Charlie Munger, who's Warren Buffett's business partner and chairman of vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, he says, if you want to have a happy life, have low expectations. Mm, yeah no it's true in it's anything so true yeah At anything in yeah. your relationship in your yeah. work in your business yeah. it's it's really yeah. true because when you've got yeah. these uber high expectations about this is what my life should be and how it should mm. be and yeah. anything falls short of that you feel like you yeah. failed and you feel like you're not yeah. doing something yeah. right i would yeah. also add to those four points that you you brought up there another one and i would say support and that's different yeah. to coaching because coaching is this way uh, well i suppose it can be that way but support is very much this way and if you yeah, don't yeah. have support yeah. and that's why I, one of my favorite quotes is by Arnold Schwarzenegger and he says call me anything you want but don't call me a self-made man because I did not get myself here I had a team and I had support and I absolutely love that because it's true you, we may see the one person who's up there but they didn't get there solely by their own work and their own effort people have worked with them supported them and helped them get to that point that's why I am very big on community within my own business because we need that peer support to get to where we want to get to. Yeah, definitely. And if you're in the wrong environment, you just don't get any of that support. So it makes it harder, right? So it does make it harder, yeah. 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 <laughs> 
multifaceted parts to success. Anyway, I think one of the points I want to make here for you to answer that original question, just because I'm a big advocate of network marketing is the skills you have now and how you approach your trading business, and how you attract clients is how everyone should do it in network marketing. It's just the reason why it doesn't happen is because we're taking people who are completely untrained in employee roles, thrusting them into a business enterprise with a physical product and saying, hey, go sell that. Yeah. And that is really where it gets about because you're getting all these untrained people in the field just flipping, trying to hook product. It's brutal. Yeah. It's like you yeah. know, people in the shopping center, they try and give you the, <laughs> like, ah, that's yeah. horrible, you know? Yeah, so I think, spraying you as you walk past. Yeah. yeah. So that type of selling is just should never be allowed. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. It's one of those industries though you can't just become great at without going through the brutal brutality of experience. Completely, completely. And experience is a massive educator, which yeah. One of the things you said as we were talking before is that you've only ever had an income in terms of like an employed income for four years out of your entire your time yeah. adult life. So talk to me about that. Well, like I, I went, I got a job. The only job I had was I got this job for the largest real estate developer in the world called Aldar Properties. And they're based in Abu Dhabi. And I flew there and got a job there for, for about four, four and a half years. And I was getting paid an income to be the development manager for some of the projects over there, which is fine. I had a great mentor and it was good. But when I left, I, I always had this, this yearning to be in business for myself, yearning for sales. I just had a yearning to explode out of this capped income. Like I knew there was more. I'm like, how do surely people can't get rich doing this capped income thing? Like, when we had like 30 years to be the CEO, like, and you can, which is fine. But I just, I wanted more earlier and faster, and I was probably capable. So I was like, I need to get out of this. So at the time, I went back, came back to Australia, left there. I resigned. I mean, great thing about being good with money is that when all my friends were buying cars and yada 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 over there, I was flat sharing with friends. I was hiring a Toyota Yaris. I was just saving money and I saved up about forty or fifty thousand dollars. And it allowed me to make the decision to resign. Yeah. I didn't have the golden handcuff. I, I could leave because I didn't have any mortgage debt. I just just disappeared. Boom, I'm out. And it, that, that money funded me into a commission only sales role in property. Mm-hmm. I came back in, got in business with my dad, and I said, Well, and it was like a baptism of fire. It was <laughs> it was brutally hard. But there was no retainer, there's no income, there's just like no sales experience. I came into this with really no sales. And I just sat there and watched and watched. And then I did one and I failed. And I did one and I failed. It was like six months before I got paid. But I it allowed me to fund my way into that. And then once I got paid once, I could do it again and again and again. And it was yeah. just on this. And since then, I've only ever known go generate leads and make sales. Yeah, it's really interesting to me that that journey and that process of learning, but also buying yourself the time to be able to do that. And I mean, yeah. we both have a similar passion for helping people establish financial stability and financial peace in their lives. I mean, I posted yes. it on my my Instagram, right. and then the next day you did a podcast. <laughs> I did a it. podcast <laughs> episode. Maybe I saw you post on your Instagram and gave me the idea. I don't know, but I just hey, it's all, it's all good. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you heard <laughs> it here first, everyone. It was stolen <laughs> by Lloyd, but yeah, that's um, so funny. But yeah. it is a message that I think is really, really important, and I, I've been thinking about it a lot more recently. And that these different levels of financial growth and mm kind of the first step is financial stability and financial peace. And if you can't get to that first step, none of the other stuff is going to happen for you because I've seen people jump a level and start living at this level because they do a big deal or they do a big this or they do a big that, but very quickly they're right back down at the start and they don't know how to manage that money and maintain that money and keep that money. And those skills are so massively important. Making money is one element of financial literacy. Keeping it is another element and then helping yes. it grow is another element. There's these different elements to the financial growth and the financial skill set which people need. So yeah, in terms of buying that time, did you, because I think there's definitely a mindset element here and you talked about the golden handcuffs and everything like that. Did you not at any point have a bit of fear when that savings pot was dwindling over those six months? Did you think maybe I've made an error here? How did you kind of <laughs> handle the mindset? Yeah. Of that? Oh yeah. I mean, I was 28 and when you're in your 20s, you kind of throw caution to the wind a bit because I didn't have, I came back with my my now wife, but I didn't, we didn't have any kids or anything and didn't have a mortgage. I had no payment. I had no, nothing chasing my tail. But one thing I did know was like, I was in skill development mode. Mm-hmm. I wasn't in money-making mode. Yeah. So I understood very early in life that skills are what you need and, and knowledge is what you need first. And the money can be printed later, but there's no other way to learn skills and just to go through it. So I was still earning a bit of money, but I was there for the skill development. 
Yeah. And so, yeah, there was times where I was like, flipping heck. Like, I mean, I had enough to last me like for the 12 months, but I was like, it was, it was very motivating because I, I need to get through these deals or I'm flipping not going to eat. So yeah. you make a decision, you either rise to that and you work yeah. well under pressure like that, or you roll over. And yeah. I, just, I guess I just, I just liked the challenge. And so I was like, well, let's go do it. But there was times, especially when the business, like well, I couldn't even, it's a saga you wouldn't believe if, you, <laughs> if I told you, but the whole business was just like near collapse. It was just brutal. So we had to not only just do sales, but also run the business. And it was just this, it was the probably the most amazing entrepreneurial experience I could have asked for. Yeah. Which is funny how it comes, but because it was extremely difficult. And now uh, that's why I found network marketing so easy. Cause I was like, what do you mean? This is easy. <laughs> Let's go do yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I had that. So I guess that's good. That was a good part about it. Yeah. yeah. And so I, cause I think a lot of people have, that fear element when they're a, about to start something new. And I think if you can put it in that mindset element, which you just talked about there of skills development, and I'm thinking about my own students and their journey, because a yeah. lot of people within the financial learning education world, they want to get rich now. That's what they want. They, they're desperate to get rich right now. And yeah. I think if, if you can communicate effectively that actually you, you have to do some learning first, there's a skill set for you to develop here, and then you can start making the money. I think that's really, really important and a really good way to to put things into perspective for people so that's um yeah that's really good yeah it's interesting isn't it people want that, that people what is it people wish for the sword or that people pray for the sword but not the power to wield it mm, yeah yeah very very true so i was praying for the power to wield it before i wanted it you know and that's why i remember sitting in the pro- my property deals i'll do a property deal see a client come back read the intelligent investor for a bit like i was priming and learning and preparing myself for the money i was going to make because i needed to put it somewhere and i was yeah. ferociously buying berkshire hathaway stocks at 80 bucks yeah as much as i could it's now through over 300 so it's like what i could get money now i was going to was going to multiply it how was i going to do it yeah. So, yeah. So speaking of the sword and speaking of violence, talk to me about boxing. How did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really interesting because without that experience, again, I wouldn't have had this financial coaching business and, and become an all and written some books because I was, we were doing well in our network marketing business. And I met this guy through that. And uh, he happens to be an ex Australian world champ, uh, ex Australian champion and like number 12 in the world boxer. And he has his boxing program. At the time it was like fight, called Fight Like a Pro. And you do 10 weeks of training, then you do a fight. And I was like, you know, he showed it to me. I was like, what do you want me to do? You want me to help you promote it? And he goes, no, I want you to do it. I was like, okay, I did it. I was like, all right, I'll do that. I'll, I just read Goggins' book, Can't Hurt Me. So I was like, yeah, I was doing it. I was just doing all sorts of stuff. I was doing crazy stuff at the time. Like, yeah, yeah I'll do this. And trained hard. Did a boxing fight. It was brutally difficult. Like, boxing fights are the most physically demanding things. <laughs> wow. Just it's like being at the gates of hell. It's brutal. Mm. just the cardio i mean like it's just not the you don't even feel the pain it's just the cardio anyway so won that which was exciting and it was an amazing experience of course but what was great was the training when i was, I was training it was really hard training grueling but i i liked the challenge and the hardness of it so i kept doing it with with gavin his name is now dear friend and he said to me one day i was talking to the guys around about money and investing and micro investing all sorts of stuff they wanted to learn no just kind of like listening and he i helped these kids i said hey you need to set up this app and start looking at this and he said this is amazing he said you need to write a book yeah and he said and so what he did is he said oh you're gonna write a book and you got four weeks go wow. and he held me accountable to it so i did it and then his son has actually helped me to like bring it all to life because he's wonderful in marketing so the whole experience actually created and birthed this entire business that i've got yeah yeah and, so, and again i think it just speaks to the power of who you were around who's in your environment yeah. who you connected yes. to who you're talking yes. to because yeah. if you're connected to people that aren't inspired themselves yeah. then what yeah. inspiration are you getting if you're yeah. talking to people that aren't driven then what's helping you stay driven and, and realize there's there's more for you and that type of thing so yeah totally. i think again that totally speaks to who's in your network who's around yeah. and and yeah who you've got supporting you again and what's on the other side of hard things you know people say to me like how did you create this whole thing i'm like well i did go get punched in the face <laughs> thousands of times and then and an opportunity presented itself like and i yeah. i think doing hard things and challenging yourself it, it for some reason the universe rewards it in weird ways it does and i i think one of my lucky skills that is innate in me is I like people. And that means mm. I talk to people. I want to find out about people. And that has led to some incredible opportunities just because I've ended up chatting to someone on an airplane, on a train, 
wherever I happen to be. And that's opened up doors of opportunity. And again, because I'm intentionally looking to grow my, I suppose, network, not from the desire to be a networker, just because I have a genuine interest in people. And I think that authenticity really does shine through um, in, in what you do, especially online when there's a lot of inauthentic people. Authenticity really does come through quite clearly. Yeah. And I think that's why, like, even at the start of this interview, like, if there's any questions you don't want to ask, I'm like, man, I'm an open book. Like, whatever you want to talk about. Yeah. I just, it's like, it's too difficult to wear masks. Yeah. I know. It's, it's exhausting. I did that when I was a kid. I did that when I was a teenager. I did that in my early 20s. Yeah, Got no interest brutal. in it anymore. Yeah. No, so, bad. final question then for you. Um, I always like to just make one up on the spot and see where we go <laughs> with it. So, if you were to be trapped on a train, with three people who would you want to be trapped on a train with probably a train driver <laughs> yes yeah, so i'm assuming there's a train driver already um an, an engineer and a mechanic done you yeah got yeah, yeah. People, escape yeah. artist and engineer, Houdini. <laughs> uh, it's very it's really hard that one yeah it's hard i want my wife there i guess and uh my dad <laughs> maybe my mom that's three done. <laughs> I mean, I love my parents. yeah done yeah it's a hard one yeah like god what a flipping question I know it is a hard one, right? Yeah. yeah. Because yeah, then part, I, part of me goes like, oh, well, would you want your, if it's say it's a runaway train and you don't know what's going to happen, would you want your loved ones there? Would you want them to survive? Totally. And you're, you're like, well, you're what kind of train? Yeah. Is, is it doomed? Is it, yeah. yeah. Is it a doomed uh, train? Is it going somewhere yeah. fun? Where are we going on this train? Yeah. yeah. Can they, are they dead or alive? Can I have Elvis Presley? Can you give me a concert? Yeah. yeah, anybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's a ghost train. There you, there you go. Yeah, could have been anything. Brilliant. Well, that's um that's everything from me then, Lloyd. Thank you very, very much for your time. And thank you, everybody, for watching and tuning in to this episode of Not Financial Advice. Thank you very much. 